will be the main event, at least here in France, uh, between Cuba and Le Bleu. Okay, this tournament is all about getting to the Olympics. Already directly qualified Brazil and the USA, FIBA Africa winner Senegal, FIBA Americas Canada, FIBA Asia Japan, Serbia, the list goes on. The, the winners of those tournaments uh, have made it. There's five spots up for grabs here at this women's Olympic qualifying tournament. And there's nothing quite like uh, playing at Olympic games uh, for an athlete, is there, Mark? As we look at this qualifying tournament, uh, the FIBA rankings of the teams in Group C, Belarus, Korea, and Nigeria. On this evidence, uh, Belarus are far and away the favorites uh, ahead of Nigeria in this game. Uh, but then again, there are only two ranking points ahead of Korea. And, and something tells me really this ranking right here isn't really that indicative of how close this game might be. Well, I would agree with you 100% because the common consensus last year at AfroBask is that the Nigeria messed up in one of the early games, which meant they really found it tough and ended up only in the bronze medal game where they were one of the well, arguably one of the best teams in the tournament. They've added, they've upgraded in some spots, especially on the inside since then, but it's the same problem. They're gonna be facing one of the most experienced teams that ever played international basketball since 2007. This team has been at the top table of women's international basketball alongside you know the greatest teams around. This team, from an experience point of view, is just, this second to none. So that's the task that faces Nigeria, but they've got some players with great pedigree internationally, playing in great leagues, and they've got some great profile players from the NCAA in terms of their college careers. So there is a way that this could become a hell of an interesting game because Belarus, we saw them last year, phenomenal for a while at Eurobasket, but they have games off. And it's about that consistency now. The big plus for them is that Vera Mayinka is now back to her best after a full season of play, whereas she was quickly back after the birth of a, uh, of a child last year. So this is intriguing. 42 rank compared to 10? I don't think so. Well, as you look at Anatoly Boyovsky, who's been there for all the good times with Belarus, going back to the Eurobasket women 2007 in Chieti, Italy, when Belarus, Belarusian women's basketball was really put on the map with Lashenka, Natalia Marchenka, and, and uh, Snitsina, all of these great players. Uh, some of them aren't here now, but uh, Tatiana Troina certainly was a member of that, of that tr fantastic team, as was Trafimava there. Uh, they got the bronze, or the third place. Uh, they made it through the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament in Madrid. They go to the Olympics in China. They make it to the quarterfinals and fall to the hosts. Um, and then in 2010, you know, they came within a whisker or an eyelash of make it to the final of the FIBA Women's World Championship, only losing uh, heartbreaking fashion to the Czech Republic. So anyway, much more to talk about. We're gonna have the national anthems now played for both of these teams, Nigeria and Belarus.
So the playing of the national anthems uh, has taken place, and now Scott Naji, the coach of Nigeria, comes over and uh, gives his regards to Anatoly Wojowski. And the players also uh, exchange pleasantries, as is the custom. And the referees uh, tonight from Brazil and Panama and Saudis. So, what, Mark, I'm wondering, we'll get your thoughts, some more thoughts on, on these two teams, but as the warm-ups continue, we've got about three minutes before the opening tip. Uh, we're going to have a look at both rosters and then the starting fives for each of these teams. And why don't you uh, go through this Nigerian team roster for us? Well, the, the leading scorer, number 11, uh, and well, Elonu from last year is back, and that's the continuity of eight players from last year's Afro basket is going to be a big factor for me. But they've upgraded. They've been me on the inside at, at time at uh, South Carolina, played minutes for Coach Staley there uh, in the last year's 17. And uh, so they've got depth and they've got experience. And I think this team, you know, Madu is a big time rebounder. She does a really nice job on the glass. So they have ways, I think, to challenge this Belarusian team. That, you know, it, it's very European, obviously, in, in its style. It sometimes can be taken out of what it wants to run. Uh, the, the key, though, is they have Lindsey Harding in the lineup. And that, that, in that in itself gives you so much uh, security, so much consistency to go alongside, I think. And then, you know, I, I commentated on a number of tournaments now, but uh, Anastasia Vramanka and Elena Vichenka as a combination on the inside. I just enjoy to watch and see them play together. That combination is back to its best. So we hate that both like veteran players now, but that's going to be a huge factor. I don't know if the... IQ and the defense of the Nigerian is going to be able to deal with that starting lineup. And it goes, there's every bit of experience in that lineup that Kujowski's can put on the floor. But Lindsey Hardy, for me, just pulls the right strings. The change for Vermeer is just a great combination. Jeff, as we see this Nigerian huddle, I'm not sure how they're going to play them defensively. There's part of me that says that they could be a little cute in something they do defensively as we look at those two matchups, the, the, the highlights of each team. And know, as I said, top scored last year in Eurobasket, a 14 point, uh, Afro basket, 14 points a game, five rebounds. Lichenka just does it every single tournament she's been at. And there was almost so much desire that she almost carried her team to some big wins in the latter stages last year in Eurobasket. Well, even the world championship the year before, and you know, looking back at so many great moments. Scott Nagy, big moment for him. You know, the men's team from Nigeria won the Afro basket last year, so they're going to be at the they're going to be at the Olympics, and for the second time in a row, and the African women uh, would like to sorry, the Nigerian women would like to to be there with them. There's Anatoly Bujalski who doesn't seem to have changed one bit no. since uh, <laughs> Italy 11 years ago. He must be drinking from the fountain of youth. And the team, uh, one of the dips, it, it wasn't even a great dip because they still ended up in the top eight. When he wasn't at the helm, the whole program didn't have the same feel. He stamps his, his personality, and then he's got some experience that he's so used to working with it. Yeah, he had Ramontis uh, Gerges from Lithuania that took over. There's Lachenka. And in fairness to Gerges, he had some, uh, some, some notable absences yeah. when he was coaching. He had uh, Birmaika that was out. He had to kind of move into the new generation without Marchenka and also, although I can't remember actually if she retired before he got there under Bujalski, but also uh, he had the he had the uh, injury to Tarasaba, the starting point guard. Yeah. But that said, um, I, I agree with you. It's, it's kind of difficult to think about Belarusian basketball without Bujalski. Oh, it's going to be a it's going to be one of those difficult positions to take long term when he's not at the helm. That's a challenge from a coaching perspective. This time last week, Lindsay Harding was uh, in the WNBA. She's taken a break to come play for Belarus to try to get to the Olympics. Oh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nantes, France. The third game of the day. Group C clash between Nigerian green and Belarusian white is underway. 
And this Little Roos team is uh, going to try to defend against Maidu, and she just immediately gets inside and goes right to the rack. Oh, that was quick, wasn't it? Quick move. Now Harding doesn't mess around, passes outside to Zitsina, and she misses the jump shot. And now, Ogoke is operating against Likarovic, who's wearing the uh, striking uh, headband. We're not going to lose sight of her out there. These are the shoes that you talk about. <laughs> jump shot for Nigeria. And a long or a rebound. And what missed for Nigeria was Zagoke. Inside it goes, and another easy look. Well, that's a tough cut. Elonu, that's a really hard cut to defend. Really got the, got the beater on the front cut. Which it's tough to defend when she gets that half step. She had soft touch. That's, that's a great start for Nigeria. A terrific start now. When you want to get something going, you go to the horse. And you get it inside the Lachenka. That's a thoroughbred horse. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Continues to win races. Yep. And a three-pointer. Off target again from Agoke. So Agoke. And Likarovic, a little bit careless uh, handling the ball out there, not respecting uh, Agoke. Jeff, this is intriguing for me because Nigeria initially has got stuff going to the basket, which they have to do. They, they can't stop shooting. They've got the open looks late in the offense. Shoot from range. Try and make the rebound even there. The longer rebound favors their athleticism. They've made a nice start. They're using quickness. This is a, a challenge here for Belarus. Dragging Luchenka out to the three-point line has got to be a good option. Well, another jump shot. And Likarovic uh, kind of batted it over to Luchenka. Uh, there's so many unknowns about this Nigerian team. Just uh, as you look at Lindsey Harding, blow past the defense, but then doesn't make the shot. Great job challenge, challenging that from the help. They did a really nice job getting the hand up. Well, inside, another attempt for Nigeria, but this time it's Sani. 29-year-old center. And traveling has been called. That's an interesting call. I don't think anyone was paying attention because the play was over. Um. Okay, another jump shot. Misses, but Amakamura was there. He had position, and it was one of those situations where an air ball sometimes, as the defender, you know, kind of yeah. catches you off guard. I'll tell you what, Belarus, uh, if they're if they're not careful here, they could they could get into trouble against this uh, Nigerian team. Lindsey Harding puts up a three, and that, uh, that's a two, but that's going to settle them down a little bit. Well, that sort of sums up the difference. Didn't they spent time with the ball. They went inside, outside, reversed it. Harding with a feet set it looked really sweet from the perimeter. But uh, that's about tempo. That tempo is going to be different the whole game. Ilonu goes right at Snitsina. And just how crucial is it to get Jeremiah involved here for Belarus? There's Harding again. Gets it over to Snitsina wide open. They cannot continue to leave her wide open, but she doesn't punish him. Hitorovic steps in front of Agoke. Now she feeds it inside. Amakamura. Amukamara, rather, excuse me. Princess Amukamara. Now Madu. And Madu hits another jump. Wow, this, uh, this mid range game and the confidence they have. And Belarus are playing a little soft. So, like, you know, they get the option to get their own rhythm going offensively. It's, uh, it's a really positive start for Nigeria. Oh, Mr. That's unusual. I didn't think I'd ever say Vermeinka and Mrs. Luchenka underneath because uh, they all, they're almost uh, telepathic at times. 40, of course, Korea is uh, the team that will also play these two teams. I know their coaches here are uh, watching. They find Vermeinka, but she doesn't catch the ball. Korea's coach, Wee Sung Woo. And you wonder 
I suppose the advantage really goes to the team that wins that first game because and then especially like Argentina if they have the next day off. Oh, yes, absolutely. Wow, wow. another jump shot from Manu. They're just letting Nigeria get an, an, a pass to the post and almost not respecting the jump shot. And they're literally knocking down jump shots for fun at the moment. Viktorovic gets inside, twists, turns, puts it up and in. Interesting when Belarus played at the Olympic qualifying tournament back in 2008, they lost the game. Inside and the swat from Snitsina. By the way, Vera Man could just, you know, she's a presence, both her and Luchenko underneath. We're into that rotation that we saw last uh, year in Uruguay where Luchenko gets out early and then gets back in, so. Pretty fixed the rotation. Wow. That's a real, yeah. But she nevertheless, Elonu was able to go baseline. And that's pretty slightly worrying, really. But certainly the way they approach this game. So, yeah, Belarus, back in 2008, they started off losing their first game. Uh, to Cuba, 68-58, but then they beat Chinese Taipei and Brazil to make it to the Olympics. Inside it goes, and Likorovic. Beautiful high post entry, back cut. And Nigeria, yeah, they've talked about this before, but Belarus will get stuff off the, off, the, off the sets they run because they execute so well. They've just got to play and stay with it and not turn it over. Well, that was a great read by Lindsay Harding. She takes it all the way, passes over to Traina. And Vermaink with his long arms is able to get the rebound back to Traina, and then Traina's hacked. Traina, a player that's uh, had to overcome some serious injuries. Papova coming into the game now for Belarus. One of those players that has come through during that, the, uh, the recent era where they've been at that, that top table. She's one of the players who's really beginning to make an impact. And when Vera and uh, Luchenko are, are on the roster, she can play the, the right spot. She can stretch the floor. So Belarus have that type of rotation. Katrina just gets one of two to go down. Of course, Troina also played college basketball in America for South Carolina, but that was uh, before Don Staley was there. And Verimayinka. Uh, Verimayinka doesn't get the credit she deserves for the way she challenges shots. There's Likorovic inside with the left hand. And missed the layup. And to the frustration of Vujovski. So Nigeria still leading by one. Kalu puts up a three. And Troini with the rebound. And top of it, who's in the game will throw her body around, but it's interesting. Look at the little trap there for Nigeria. A foul has been called on Nigeria. I think Nigeria have to start to get into rotations here. They're way at a pace. And that's, uh, that's the first six minutes of the game, so they're going to have to start to to get into those rotations on the bench and they've already picked that's the third foul all three fouls now going against um sunny so uh, a great situation for her harding dribbling around up top Benz gets in puts up a very difficult shot she's trying to make a pass and she couldn't find anybody ugoka meanwhile has come into the game number 10 for nigeria There she is, and puts up her first shot. Likorovic gets the long rebound, and Harding says, let's slow it down a minute. Well, that's, uh, that's not an option you really want to see him take, going straight go to Vermeer and trying to go over him. They'll go past her. Melisenko will come back in for Vermeer. That's usually how the yep. rotation goes. The first seven minutes have just flowed. Wow, this game has a tempo and a pace to it that... Uh, Normally, I would have thought Nigeria would, would, would be impressed with and would like to play at that tempo. But uh, Belarus pushing it as well. So, carries on like this. We're in for an exciting game. Likorovic online but long.
They caught Madu in the game. Made a good play at the defensive end. And now traveling. Called against Nigeria. Mind seeing that one again. I thought you kicked it off before uh, the travel would have happened. One, two. Yep. She got rid of it before she put that third step down. Easy with replay though. Popova finds Luchenko. She's got some bodies around her. Over to Troina on the baseline, and Troina hits the jumper, so Belarus have gone in front. That's a little bit of uh, rolling back the years, Troina, with that little pull up on the baseline. Really soft touch. Oh, good catch and turn from Nigeria's number 13, Ibium. Uh, she's one year out of that South Carolina program, so she's not going to be faced by going up against a huge center that she's going up against Luchenko now. Popova tries to get to the corner, and great hustle that time from Ugoka, and then she passes up ahead, and an easy one for, Bella, for Nigeria. That's Ilonu, and Bujolski calls timeout, so his team took the lead. And now they are trailing. It's interesting. Nigeria is showing what they're made of here early on. Mark, what is it that worries you right now for Belarus? Well, I think the, 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 the most worrying thing is that uh, in the half court, they're actually getting very controlled looks at the basket. They're, they're being allowed to face up, and then that mid-range jump shot they got going early, they're, they're, they're actually not being taken out of what they want to run. And they're being very, very, well, Elonu in particular, early, really aggressive cuts. And where you think the most teams worry about Belarus going to the inside, this team has no fear. And we haven't just made that really nice, like a little short jump shot right over Luchenko and actually took some contact in making it. It's That's what's worrying my Belarus. They're getting, Nigeria getting the looks they want. And another turnover. And since her introduction into the game, Uju Goka has been terrific. Jump shot no good, but Agoka with the rebound and then can't control it. It goes out of bounds. She got there. That's the biggest thing. She's still active. She's getting there. It's that combination that they're active, they're aggressive, but they're very much at the moment, very under control in terms of they're getting there. They're running what they want to run. They're getting what they want. And they seem pretty comfortable in their own skin as a team. They're, they're, as a group, eight players return. You can see they have that continuity. Kalu now into the game as she's guarding Harding. And she is on her like white on rice. And then she's a little bit too much on her. She, the contact sends Harding crashing to the ground. Interesting coaching uh, dynamic down there with uh, Nigeria's uh, Pochicini uh, Morado seems to be taking the sort of lead role during during the game, even though he's listed as the assistant. And uh, he's doing a great job of it at the moment. And now we've got a technical foul. Uh, having just complimented that, that team on, on Naji. Wow, what did he say to the referee? Surely this early in the game, unless he said something fairly dramatic, there are, there are ways to perhaps uh, deal with it. He just said, ref, what about that? <laughs> he was complaining about no call, but he didn't say anything bad. That's bizarre. Maybe he's been warned already. I mean, the other thing is uh, you, you really only allow one coach that's allowed one, to pay, but... There's a little thing going on in Italy at the moment. They, they list the head coach as the assistant, so if anyone is ejected, someone on the bench gets up and walks. It's, uh, it's a bit of a quirk of the rule, but 
I'm sure that's not why they're, why they're doing what they're doing. No. But. It's a Rovic. Brought about Ogun oh. Jimmy, the captain. Here she is. Gets it back. Puts it up. And good. How good is it if you've got someone with that experience as Luchenko to put it on the floor, under control, and just kick it to an open shooter? That's why he's playing guard out there at the moment. Ogun Jimmy and the captain puts up an air ball. About as even as it gets, it's 14 apiece. And an intriguing contest. 25 seconds. And an offensive foul called on Troina. And that speaks volumes right there about the work that Utu Igoka yeah. is doing. Defensively all over the court. Look at that. Yep. She's being a pest defensively. I uh, love, love the way the referee interpreted that. That's that's really rewarding her for staying in stance. Now inside it goes. She passes it back to Kalu, and then it goes off the hands of Vivian. That's a great dynamic out there at the moment. Harding and Lucheng are just sorting out the issue on the floor. Grouski's job, he's got a number of leaders on this team, and uh, they know they're in a battle right now. Harding hands it off to Lashenka. And her long jump shot, she took that, of course, because it was right at the end of the quarter. So, 10 minutes in the books. It's 14-14, Belarus uh, in Nigeria. Not too much, really, to separate these teams. Just, uh, Entertaining one. Well, it's an entertaining one. I tell you, he's the most, the most worried guy in the gym at the moment is the head coach for the, the Koreans. But these two teams are putting on a game here, and they look very, very comfortable as, as a team. You know, when you look to the groups, no one was really sure how this was going to pan out. You know, the numbers, you're, work, you're working hard to get those shots. You know, both teams having to really execute to get good looks. This group looks like a tough group just after one quarter. Well, Korea are a good, are a, a very strong team. So this group is going to be intriguing. But right now, that's a real reflection of how close this game was. 14-14. Well, I think we're set. Well, just to set the table for you again, it's a 12-team tournament. Teams had to have a high enough finish to get to this tournament from their zone championships last year. So you had the zone winners, Japan from Asia qualifying for the Olympics. They beat China in the final. You had Senegal beating Cameroon uh, in the African championship, the Afrobasket women. They made it to the Olympics. You had Australia beating New Zealand. So Australia qualified in New Zealand are here. Uh, that was in the FIBA Oceania Women's Championship. You had Belarus, which played they made it to the semifinals of the Eurobasket women, which uh, clinched their spot. And Nigeria uh, won the third place game at the Afrobasket. That's why they're here. And you get five teams out of the qualifying tournament, out of this tournament, uh, that will book their places in Rio. Well, you said that the pressure on you, you make a mistake, you lose a game, you're in a real hole in this two games. And if you're not there, you're out before the finals, you're done. And, uh, what playing at the Olympics is about, that pressure. That's a serious man-to-man uh, -man defense, or woman-to-woman -woman defense here, being played by Nigeria. Right. Ball knocked out of the hands of Lachenka. Kalu takes it all the way down, hands off to Ibiam, who made the play defensively in the first place. Uh, if we get a if we get a replay of the of the defense, you see Vera Mankru normally is really very very decisive. Just hesitate on that pass to Lucenko. That just gave him a chance to get round, get a hand in the lane. And you love it when a big player is rewarded. You know they ran the floor, and she ends up with getting the pass. And this Nigerian team has a really nice feel about it at the moment, and they look like they've got depth. Yeah. They may, they, they may have more depth than Belarus. Well, I would, that's, uh, I think that's a pretty good score at the moment. That's how it looks with the, with the first, like, set of rotations. 
Popova, who has the capacity to do things uh, unexpectedly. Well, that's that thing about when you've got Veramayenko and Luchenko in the game, she, she gets a matchup and can extend the floor like that. Excuse me, it's Popova. And oh. the swat from Veramayenko. Now, that's crucial for Belarus. Perhaps uh, on that defensive end more than anything is her presence. And Sa oh, what a drive. Strong move. And Kalu takes a trip to the line for a possible three-point play, just 23 years of age. Well, she had, she's had that season uh, in Portugal, you know, playing in the Portuguese. And there's no substitute for being in professional leagues. There's no su you come out of college, you're a talent, and then you've just got to, there's a difference when you play in that pro, in that pro situation. And she, you know she's loving the challenge right now, oh, guarding a WNBA yeah. player in Harding, who also plays in Europe. Played for Kursk last season in Russia. Here's Harding. And again, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember uh, Harding really being that consistent with a jump shot last year at the Eurobasket Women. Yeah. She's come right out tonight and hit a couple. That mid-range, it's like when you, when you ask her to extend, she struggles a little bit from for, for deep. That's obviously relatively struggles. Doka has it inside, back outside to Ogun Jimmy, and this time rattles out. And the Belarus with a, a one-point lead, looking to extend it with Likorovic. Popova in the corner. He just made one three, so they're not going to leave her alone. Harding again. And Harding's pass. Don't understand that why Likorovic wouldn't go for that. Maybe it wasn't the best pass, but... It's almost as though she, sometimes Belarus, for me, get in that situation where she's not supposed to make that pass, so I'm not ready for that pass. And she's looking to go inside, and no one's in there. It was wide open for the She should have just held it. And a good D from Vera Mayinka, who's becoming uh, more of a factor defensively. Popova. Jurovic. Vera Mayinka. Makes herself available, but surrounded uh, by Nigerian shirts. <laughs> Nigerians, uh, Lashenka just has the ball turned over. And the jump shot, target again for Nigeria. So it's starting to slow down just a little bit here. Right, so it was a reasonable look, but it's kind of if you're going to take that at the end of the break that early, and his club is fouled on the way to the hoop. You've got it. I think they have to keep taking as long as they're balanced. In transition, I think they've got to keep letting it go as long as they're balanced. So we've got timeout. Ogun Jimmy comes out. Interestingly, you see Popova drive into the lane and draw the foul. You know, one of the, the figures over on the bench is Oyedeji, the Nigerian men's captain. Down. So I'm guessing but he's going to play the Olympics. Well, now go again. We dance sides, but we play for Didi again. So, Didi, you set the screen for Ellen. Ellen, go. If they don't want to go, then they will definitely be on the position. They can be thrown. Well, Belarus uh, shooting 50%, but Nigeria is going to be giving you a few more opportunities. And we've seen Coach Valski a lot in recent years, and you can often tell how he's been in terms of his intensity and stuff during the timeout. He knows he's in the game now. That was a pretty, you know, he wasn't, he didn't take the timeout, but uh, he's, he's coaching hard at the moment. I don't know if he, I'm not sure he thought that Nigeria were going to come out and be this controlled, and they're running some nice things in transition. But their defensive effort is at the top draw. And really, if you're, if you're Belarus, you're slightly worried by the fact that Nigeria are getting a lot of stuff in the lane. Yep. And they've got 12 of their 18 points have been scored in the paint. Uh, and, and the only time that the Belarus are dominating there is that they don't get past their main draw. They try and shoot over it. So, you know, she's becoming a factor because she literally is just looking after that, looking after the middle of the keyway. 
Popova makes both. I like Popova in the three, Jeff, when, when she's able to play the three and having Troyina and, and some of the vets come back gives them that flexibility. Right, she's a physical player. And there Mayinka once again, that was just much better defensively for Belarus. Oh, almost, almost a matchup zone in the way that they ran that defense that time. So they're in lanes. Oh, Harding just goes right down the middle. Nobody picked her up. She's reading the game well. And that Nigeria have got to, you know, against this little matchup type zone, they've got to go inside, but they've got to create angles. They can't just throw it in. They've got to create the angle and stretch the defense. Because this is exactly what Belarus want them to do. Try and throw it in against the bigs as opposed to try and create angles. And uh, that's two consecutive phases down here where they have struggled against that matchup zone. Well, they had an opportunity there. But they... Rovic wasn't that bad of a pass. No. Well, they can get pieces of it. It's... Uh, from the corner. And Elodu can't knock it down. So it goes back over to Belarus. And, and Nigeria don't look like they have any sort of high post uh, option. No one's flashed to the high post to try and make that defense uh, squeeze and collapse and turn in on itself. At the moment, they're stretching, so they're in passing lanes. It's going to be interesting to see if they can make that adjustment. Amuka Marth back in the game for Nigeria, and Popova has just nailed her second three-pointer. Uh, she stretches the defense. It's a big, that's a big little you know, eight-point gap now. So that was Popova, not Snitsina, but quickly Amuka Mara. Well, that's one way to get into the high post area, penetrate in there, because at the moment, Belarus are really stretching that matchup. Pass outside, another one for Popova, and she is all of a sudden becoming a difference maker. Shall we say the X Factor? Oh, that's, uh, I, I think it's that she definitely is, and it's that it's the balance that this team now has that she can play in that role. She's not great on the dribble. I think she's just a great, great shooter who can step and stretch it. Well, she's, uh, she's done this in the past for Belarus, and she hasn't waited uh, for this tournament to get going no, and make no. an impact. So timeout on the court, and Belarus now with a nine-point advantage. Well, you talked about that 2013 year of basket when they, when they struggled a little with players missing, and that was her first tournament, and so a lot of expectation. And so she had to play because Bermanenko yes. wasn't there. And, but she was almost having to play as the four, and she just doesn't have that size. So against some teams, you know, the, and look at that, Popova's three is the, the, the big difference in the yeah, game. It's nine points, yeah? Exactly. And it's, uh, it's that whole combination. And I don't think that Adrian Ferowski is as good a coach as there is. And exploiting is a, what he has as his strength. He really does know how to use what he has. And he'll accept mistakes as long as they're trying to do that. Uh, it's just the way he won't go away. From, I think it's great the way he stays with the confidence he has in what he's good at and what his team is good at. 11 points for Popova. Who would have thunk it? You know, we talk about her uh, coming back with Chenka and everything else, and Popova just steps in. So, yeah, those guys are there doing the hard work. I'm just going to knock down shots. But the first uh, three letters of her name, well, no, that's not going to work. I was thinking pop. Pop over, but it's not going to work, is it? She's popping them in. She's popped. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Amukamara now. Oh, that's good to starts. see. Though. Nigeria go with the two high posts, trying to get it into that area, trying to make that defense uh, pull in. Tell you what, the way Belarus are playing D, and that was a big, big shot made wow. by Madu. This Nigerian team is good. Yeah, that just. Full stop after that. This team has has options and has talent. And at the moment, they're playing a very controlled way. There's no panic about that little run from the three-point line that Belarus have put together. Here, Maikal, beautiful handoff to Lashenka. And that's just... 
How many times? Exquisite how ability. many times do you see that with those two? Amukamara oh. though answers. Nobody rotated to help out. Zuskov is going to come into the game for the first time. Likorovic. A little foul there with Harding uh, yeah. being helped up off the ground. I think she's going to come out of the game. Yeah, Madhu's going to pick up the uh, the personal. I didn't, didn't really see. There was a lot of bodies between us and, uh, and the action. Let's watch this again. Now. We saw Likorovic take a shot. Well, Matt, Matt just ran through it. Whereas uh, with Harding, it was more of just a case of physical play. She went down. Yeah. She ran, ran through that. Nothing untoward. Zioskova, who's deceptive. Here she, gosh, she doesn't wait any time at all to launch a three. I don't think that's going to keep her on the court long. But then again, it's Burowski's thing about that's what she does. Maybe it's too early, but that's what she does. That's what I, she's got to go in for, but not after one pass. Yeah. He's going to say, don't wait so long to put me in next time. Abu Kamara drives baseline. And the air ball and the tip. Well, Sani. Sani made sure the stats man got that. Put a, put a hand up for that one. Trying it for three. It's good. Oh, this and is a level, Jeff. This is a level of game. Both teams working to get open shots. They're making open shots. And inside, no good. I mean, the big difference in the game is the three-point shooting of Belarus. You know you've got it. You know they've got that in them. Popova, Troina. The only intriguing thing there is Nigeria, if they can hang in and they can keep this game within a manageable number. And will Belarus tire? You know, it's a, they're a little old, a little experienced, yes, but uh, they're going to have to play a lot of minutes. You know, the, the big question mark about Belarus coming into this tournament was how would they, look at that, the three points in this quarter, four, five for Belarus. The big, the big question is how are they going to cope with the pressure? And Lashenka misses one that she should have made. Amukamara gets it to Igoka. Now Ogun Jimmy for three. And Lashenka just uh, got that rebound like the all pro that she is. Absolutely. Owned it. Owned the, owned the glass. But that was a big weakness last year, Mark, was the, the ability or the inability of Belarus to handle the pressure. And uh, they were vulnerable at times. Igoka. And this Nigerian team just need a little bit of poise, a little bit of composure on the finish because they've had good looks. Forget the, ins, the, uh, the, 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 the perimeter game that's not going for them, but they've had good looks, just a little bit of composure, and they are right in this. Their defense, and that question about uh, Belarus handling pressure, they're handling great pressure here, and they're handling it pretty well. Because Nigeria just really going after it down that end. Oh. You can see Lashenka can barely get down the court, and she's going to come out. And because the play continues, Bujolski has to call timeout. And I think sometimes Jeff, he uses those timeouts more about rest than, than in Sinki. He's not going to change too much with his team. That matchup zone was a nice, a nice change. It really did break it open for him a little bit. But she's going to have to go. She's going to have to go high in the 20s and minutes if they're going to win this game because Nigeria is relentless. They've missed shots. They're not backing down. They're not changing. And the last couple of times, they've had shots in transition. They just haven't finished until the last one. And, you know, eventually you would think that some of the threes would fall for Nigeria. Uh, they didn't shoot a bad percentage of Afro basket. They, they, they were, it's not something they would focus on, but... Uh, they, they, I think they have to shoot it just to keep the defense honest. You know, they're going to make enough. Hey, no more three points. Well, and shoot with confidence. Because every time we have an easy shot, shoot with confidence. Okay? And let's go and try to run every time. Try to run every Abs time. Absolutely go. important. They've got to try and run every time. If they come up and they Get come up empty, yeah, they've got to keep 
as long as they can play enough defense if they're missing a couple of easy looks, which is what they're doing at the moment. I don't think they need to... The switching on the screen is fine, absolutely. Don't get too worried about chasing people off the three-point line because I still think the, the, uh, the, the bread and butter for this Belarusian team is, is its inside options, and it, it goes inside and outside a lot. I still think Harding's the key. If Harding has a game and knocks down that mid-range game, they're going to be tough. Well, she passes to Vermayinka. And traveling, I think, was the call. Yeah, traveling's a call. It did look like she sh may have shuffled her feet, so good call by the referee. Well, I think it's going to go back in. Just has to. Give him that little bit extra here at the end of the first half. Alonu. And her miscommunication with Madhu. Vermaika comes out. Conditioning so important, especially for a team like Belarus. Now they've got Ziaskova in there as well, perhaps. Uh, made her the point, giving Lindsay Harding a couple minutes off the ball. And Troina misses, but look oh. at that. What a substitution. I the word collaboration here because this is a coach and player and they're on the same page. She's out there on the three-point line, Jeff. Like, the Chinkers. Oh, what a terrific play from Nigeria. And Ugoka catches the pass from Ugoke and takes it straight to the hoop. So, potential three-point play. Must have been some body there because nobody really went for the ball. And as much as you love Lichenko going out there with Veramayinka out of the game, they've lost that, that, shot, that, blocking. that, that shot blocking, shot challenge on the inside. Yeah. Trina has to be careful with her elbows going for that rebound. Now she gets it inside to Lichenko. Oh. Yeah, just put it up too hard. Good play inside, good defense from Madhu. And Udoka on the baseline again, oh. hits another one. It's back to a four-point game. That's a tough shot anyway. I'm not even sure if Merrimanka challenging that would have, would, have, would have dealt with that one. But uh, I love the way this Nigerian team has just gone toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Belarus can try to hold it for one. Got it down to four seconds, three. Harding pulls up at the line. And boy, she has been good with her jump shots tonight. And that shot. Takes it back to a 38-32 lead, folks, but we got ourselves a ball game. You don't want to go anywhere. Go to the kitchen to get a cup of tea, but make sure you make it right back. It's 38-32, Belarus on top of Nigeria. Well, you got the shot of Harding walking off the floor. We said all game, mid-range, she's just having a phenomenal night. I mean, the stats, you know, both teams 54 and 61%. I think both teams are playing pretty decent defense. And uh, they're just getting done. The three point, the Papova three point explosion is the difference point wise. No question about it. You know, and it's the rebounds is tight. Nice job by Belarus sharing the basketball. 11 turnovers. So there's 11 turnovers and they're shooting 60%. So when they get it down there, they're, they're just making a hell of a lot of shots under a lot of pressure. This game's a, this is a setup, right? This is, this is, this is what Olympic basketball is about. This is a level of game that uh, would grace the tournament itself. Well, it's interesting that you, when you bring the teams together from the different zones, the different continents, uh, the different styles of game and Right now, it's Europe against Africa, although a lot of these uh, Nigeria players also come from America. So, it's opening day at the Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. We've seen China win earlier today. Who else did we see win? Uh, we saw Argentina, Argentina. put on a That's clinic right. of team basketball. So now, mm -hmm. this is uh, going to be the third winner, whoever it is. Stick around for second half action.
38-32, Belarus on top of Nigeria at halftime in Group C here at the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament in Nolte, France. And uh, these two teams uh, trying to get that precious victory as China did earlier in the day with the win over Venezuela and as Argentina did uh, when they took on Cameroon and won that game. So uh, Nigeria really showing us what they're all about. And I think... The one thing that we're thinking about, and the more that you reflect on some of the words of the assistant coach, Mauro Procaccini, uh, who's right there with the white T-shirt, talking about run, 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 you know, it, you do wonder, uh, as James the game goes on, Adora, will this Belarus team five, wear down? You day here. Well, logic tells Boy, you that that's, you that's why he wants to do it. It's just... Uh, there's no substitute Four for that side. will, that okay. desire. And Lady Lechenko okay. showed last okay. year at Eurobasket in Korea. Then, yeah, she may get very, again. very tired, but came, I think we saw her in the we last one of those rotations. With that, with that Has about 30 okay. seconds on the bench, we goes back, they run straight we play to her, get it, she finishes. I just think this is set up, Jeff, where they've got to keep running because they'll get better shots if they keep running. And will Papo come off the bench and hit threes again? I don't know. Veramenka's been a real factor defensively. She's not been a real factor trying to, you know, finding her for those, you know, eight to ten points that she would normally average in this type of situation. So there's so many ifs and buts. With a real overriding memory of that first half is the defense that Nigeria are playing, generating those turnovers and forcing Belarus to make tough shots. If they can do that for this half, this is going to go all the way down to the wire. Because like Satsino, who was normally a big factor for this team, started, but then they didn't go back to her at all. And we know she can get points in a hurry. She'll get them in bunches. Fascinating. Uh, I'll think about that as she walked off the court. I forgot she was here. Yeah. And yeah, she's quite easily one of their top two or three players. If you turn that around, Nigeria have to keep their defensive effort up because they've got to try and force Lindsay, Lindsay Harding to make plays more often. At the moment, she's getting to choose when she makes them, and she's been so, so good from mid-range. Second half action underway here. Nigeria in green taking on Belarus, and Nigeria trailing by six, and, you know, they've answered the call, really. They've had a couple of times when they could have faded. Belarus uh, getting some momentum, and Belarus come right out, pick up a turnover, and Snitsina decides uh, to pull it out. Instead of rushing it, now Vermayuka to Liktorovic. Well, for anyone watching this, if you want to know how to get back and 
play defense in transition. If you want to know how to look at options offensive, that whole play just reflects it. Cena stopped it, switched it, reversed the basketball. The Nigerians moved defensively. It was great. And unfortunately, ruined by the little reach. And Vermeinka, she has so many ways that she can help her teams. And that's a big basket. It takes it back up to eight. Remember, Harding hit a jumper right before halftime. Goka drives in all, oh. and they just continue to show great resolve. Nigeria, they're not going to give in. They showed that little mix-up, match-up type zone where they flammed it off and left the high post empty. She attacked that space. Now to Lushenko. And Smitsina, how many times are you going to see your low post threat like Lushenko pass it out instead of going straight to the basket? But... That's big for a couple of reasons, because they really need Snitsini to get involved. And nice answer that time from Elonu, and finally, Nigeria knocked down a three. Well, you said sooner or later they would they would start to make, and uh, definitely, great execution. Oh, Verma is gonna put up a three and drill it. How about that? When we said, is she gonna start making a contribution offensively? It's, it's taken us less than two minutes for her to knock down five, so. Oh, what a play. Stepping inside, Likarovic fouls the jump shooter, Agoke, Agoke. And Sarah Goke now will go to the line. So all of a sudden, we've got an offensive explosion here. And it's the, people are making great plays, though. It's not as if the defense is just, apart from obviously the last play where they fouled the jump shooter, but they're having to run great transition to get Vermeer broken on trout. Great full reversal to get a long closeout. This is a level, but both, both, both teams are making plays at a great level. As, you, as it should be at a Women's oh. Olympic Qualifying Tournament. Now Sitsina drives in, puts it up and in, and quite clearly uh, she's getting involved. She made that with her left hand. Well, I think they do that type of thing as, as well as anybody from, a, from, the, from Europe in the sense she catches it and goes and has the advantage because she makes that decision very quickly. That's an excellent move. Jump shot. And Lashenko with the rebound. Belarus fans starting to make a little bit of noise here. Harding just behind the line, but Lyshenko gets the rebound. It's it back to Harding. And Harding was uh, not able to control it. In step. Oh, the SWAT. Vermayinka. And Harding gets it. Lachenka. Wow. Running the floor, Lachenka. Tells you everything you know about how much she wants to make an Olympic game. She went, she went the whole length and got rewarded with the pass as well. Oh, Lono drives in but doesn't finish. Quickly to Likarovic. Oh, bounce pass well defended by Nigeria. But we were talking to uh, Australia coach Brendan Joyce, who's here watching and scouting these games. I wonder how many other coaches, national team coaches, are taking advantage of this. Well, you hope if you have aspirations to win medals, this. this watch stuff online and whatever, but there's no substitute with seeing it and being yeah. involved in the dynamic. I know that Lisa Tomitis had Canada over here and they actually played Australia. Canada, Canada coach, there you go. Nigeria get the stop. Now Abukamara pulls up and doesn't get the friendly roll. And Lushenko strong inside. Harding goes behind her back. 
Gino Oriema. You reckon he's watching? I'm sure he's watching. He never leaves a stone on the nice pizza or pasta. And a uh, foul was called on Nigeria. And he will know a lot of these. Uh, I'm guessing he will know a lot of these players uh, from Nigeria that have played in the college ranks. It's one of those things, though, like. A lot of these coaches will know these players, but you don't want to leave anything to chance. You just want this. You know, winning a medal at Olympic Games is everybody's sort of desire. If you want, you've got to work you've got to the hours, and that's why it's great to see you know, the Australians stay. There's no reason all the Canadians wouldn't have stayed after their European excursion. Harding, and she kind of stumbles. A couple turnovers uh, on Harding here in the third quarter. And Paul Vermeke just swoops in and steals it. Well, she's been terrific in the third quarter. Yep. Well, they had a four on two at one point in Nigeria and came up empty. And traveling the call on Smithsina. Great defense for Milono. So actually, it's, it's the defense is great. It's a relentless level. It's up there. They're deciding how they want to play, how they want to offer the other team options. But both teams are still executing offensively at a great level. That's why the game has the feel it has. Look at Mark picked up her dribble. Good hands again from Verma Inca. Two on the shot clock. Alona's got to put it up, and she doesn't. And once again, really the Verma Inca factor on defense. Wow. Is... Yeah. She was so active then. She saw it was deep on the shot clock. She just left. There was no way she could pass. And that's just heads up experience. There was no way she was going to let that shot get away without it being challenged. Belarus, I think they'll have to, have to give themselves some breathing space here because they've gone hard in this third quarter. They need it by nine. But Belarus uh, with the offensive foul. Yep. And it was on Vermayinka for an illegal screen. Hardy comes out of the game. Ziaskova's back in the game. Now that's interesting as well. We haven't really talked about this, but Harding having played in the WNBA until just last week. I mean, she missed pretty much the preparations except the last week. So it's kind of a gamble. You know, a lot of people in Belarus were thinking that she wasn't going to play because she wasn't coming so late. But she had already agreed that she was going to come when she was going to come, and Bujolski was confident. Uh, with that, or comfortable. Oh, beautiful drive inside. Uh, Gokey Gokey. Is, uh, yeah, she's, she's having a, another player that's come out in this third period. That She hit the early long perimeter jump shot, then she's taking it to the bucket. Oh, oh what a move. pass, Traina and Jeremy. <laughs> that's just playing together, isn't it? They just, know each other. Overplay to the lady, she just span and the timing was just top draw. Mukamara gets it back. Now inside. And the jump shot no good. The offensive rebound and Dermayenka, who's uh, becoming the player of the game really with another block. Block and rebound. Popova, and she wow. shows a low post move, and Nigeria have to call timeout. But what can you say about Anastasia Veramayinka now? Seven points, five rebounds, and a bunch of blocks. These four blocks. The dilemma for Nigeria is you play great. You play the game as well as you can play, and the other team just goes up and left. We need that 
You've got to have a lot of belief in your defense will come through here to try and get stops. I drive and then I kick in the corner. Because I don't think down the offense, the offensive end, they're still getting looks that they want. It's just they've come up against a better Russian team in a moment. They're looking incredibly focused in terms of running their stuff. Because they're under, they're under pressure. And they're just, but they're making plays, they're making cuts, they're exiting. And Viramanko has just been a difference maker. The four blocks, the, the a couple of rebounds, he's stroking threes now. And at, at various points, this Belarusian team has found people to come up and play. But it's been built on some really solid, solid defense. This is a level, this is a really a, a high level game. 53 42, both teams playing well. Nigeria are right in this. They're going to get a run. This is at that level of game, but at some point, Nigeria are going to get a run and get right back in this. So Kalu back in the game, number eight, running the points. She's got the ball. Ilonu goes past Popova, but the hands of Traina uh, block her progress, and the ball goes out of bounds over to Nigeria. And Jeff, you see little things all the time, don't you? Traina wasn't there at, at, a, at, a Euro, at the Eurobasket, so they didn't have that rotation. All of a sudden, that rotation, you can see the impact of having someone with that experience coming in to spell people. Everything's up one notch, and that's all it takes, just the one notch. Kalu with one on the shot clock, launches it and misses everything, so it goes over to Belarus. That's about the third or fourth time in this quarter alone that Belarus have just forced them into the late clock. Oilono reaches in, just takes it straight away from Popova. Seen that a couple of times tonight. The Nigerians just taking it away. Ziskova almost sneaks in there and gets the steal. Wow, Ziskova's defensive transition gets back safe, and then she's ready to come forward as everyone else gets gets back. Zorovic comes out. Let's see Harding goes back in. But Zorovic doesn't look too happy sitting down over there, unless uh, that's a disguise. Could be jumping for joy inside. Here we go. Kalu bounce pass. Pass. Oh. Those, those the, again, the getting the shots, those opportunities, just got to take them. Otherwise, this is going to get a little bit too big in the, a lead. It's an 11-point lead. It's the biggest that Belarus have had. Now inside to Lashenka. She misses, gets it back, puts it up and in, and draws the foul. And really, I'm just wondering, as I said earlier, as you see uh, Lashenka just staying after it, Nigeria has got to come with some pressure. Yes. Because Belarus were vulnerable to pressure last year with Harding. And um, I dare say, I, I know that they've worked on this and they're aware of it. Now, Lindsay Harding says the best way to beat pressure is to attack it. I don't disagree, but they're still vulnerable. But the one thing that, that the one perspective to look at that from is at the moment against this half full pressure, they're not getting anything from it, and Belarus are getting shots they want. They've got to try and extend it to try and change that up. I don't think they, they don't look like they have a sort of trap in the locker. Well, that's another three from Ilonu. Couldn't have come at a better oh, time. They need that. Well, she's better than advertised for me. I didn't realize she was this good. Well, you could use that phrase for the whole team. Ziuskova. And the ball knocked out with a careless play from the point guard. When you're, when you're inserting Ziuskova into the game, you just want to limit mistakes. You don't want to do anything spectacular and you don't want to turn the ball over, especially as a point guard. And that's what I meant before when like she's okay, she's open to shoot the jump shot. She's not beating many people out here from Nigeria on the dribble, under control anyway. Kalu over to Ilonu, Harding in her socks. And penetration in the miss from Ekoro Madu. Again, got to, got to a shot she would expect to make. Into Lashanka. And Lashanka does the one mistake that she made. And you know what it is. She brought the ball down. Yeah. 
Oh, Kalu, nowhere really to go, and Troina puts those long arms up and comes away with the ball. Harding over to Lashenka, baseline. Well, if Lashenka's tired, he's, uh, he's still got enough legs to make that shot. Uh, to me, it looks like they've just tried to make this effort in the third quarter, build a lead, and then time and possession, try and control the outcome. Well, I think it's time for Nigeria to try something different. I, th I would agree. I, I agree that they've got to go. I think going up the floor, having a look at it now, seeing what reaction they get, they could have done that for the last minute and a half. But maybe you don't want to throw too much at them before the quarter break because that would give Belarus yeah. an opportunity to prepare. Yeah, that's maybe why they could have done it a little earlier. It's got to go up. And he does get it off in time, but only gets rimmed. Madhu has been uh, relatively quiet offensively here in the second half. There's Harding, another jumper from her. And ball goes out of bounds. Nope. Uh, Eloni saved it. Did she know it was only five seconds? I'm not sure, and that was smart. a foul from Popova. That's smart, I think. I don't think she realized how many fouls there were, to be honest. I think she may have dodged a bullet. She was wondering, are we going to shoot free throws? Oh, yeah. No, maybe not. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. And the kick. So they're going to restart it. Lindsay <laughs> Harding says she didn't kick it. Anyway, in it goes. Diskova knocks it away. And that's how it finishes. So. Belarus uh, extend their lead here in the third quarter. They are on top 58 to 45 against Nigeria. Uh, looking at the stats again, Belarus, that's an incredible number because Nigeria are really Making it work for that 63%. That's an incredible 63-42%. That Stites is so on the glass, so they've stepped it up. If they can step it up in the first, in that third quarter, they've just stepped it up again. The block. And I think Vera Mayenka with the four blocks and, and her points in that period sort of sparked that. And I, I just love it. This is really a collaboration with Jenka. And, and the other senior players here. Heron yeah, there from Kowski. This is a combination of coach and player all knowing exactly what's at stake. They're all working together in the right way. Try to press. Okay, we are. In offense, you move the ball. We must attack. Let's go. And far and down. I want the pick and roll in the middle. Don't risk the, the, the pass inside. We need to attack on pick and roll. Well, I'm not sure if he if he's saying press full court, but I think he might have said that. No, I think he said press whenever we, whenever we can. So, oh, right. Um, I, I don't like, sometimes I press whenever we can is a little bit, well, what does that mean? I would hope he means he's going to pick up. If they score, they're going to be right up there. If they can pick up early, they'll pick up early. They've got the athletes, they've got the ability to do that, but they've got to do it for the whole 10. Because coming back to 13 against a team with this much experience, Lindsay Harding at the point, he go back when Bowski goes back with starters. He's trying to close this out right now and, and make this margin big enough with no time to actually work their way back in. quarter underway and Belarus looking to extend uh, a 13 point advantage. Well, they show a 2-3 zone start in this uh, fourth period. Messina is going to launch one and the Goko has come back in and gets a rebound. Surely you need inside touches against that zone. Elonu and she continues to pour the points.
Well, now with the clock stopped and, and there's something wrong on the table or whatever, they've got a the chance to get up the floor and really try and push home that advantage. They get the stop against the zone. Get the, the quick two. Well, Elunu with the uh, basket has now got a game-high 14 points. We don't really know what's going on with respect to Scott Nachi not pacing some of that yeah. bench and calling the shots and, and in the huddle. And uh, Mauro Protetini, Protetini, the Italian team, it's almost as if he's assumed like a head coaching role. Oh, I look so we're going to have to investigate. And right from the beginning, it was that that was the decision. Obviously, he, he was there straight away. There wasn't any, oh, let's do this. So that wasn't the case in, in Afro Basket last year. It's almost a little zone trap. Didn't get the chance to trap Harding Reddit. So we saw the five on the floor, Harding, Vitorovic, Germanica, Lyshenka, and Snitsina. Five on the shot clock, Snitsina has it. And puts up a running jump shot. Well, I tell you, the, 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 zone oh. trap, the zone trap back to the uh, technical foul has been called on Lyshenka. I think so, yeah. I think words. The referee. Watch this. Watch the Shanka. No, I didn't. Maybe. Well, he definitely called a technical foul on Lachenka. Maybe he, uh, maybe she said something, or maybe he thought she said something. It looked, it looked like in the, it didn't look like she said much. She was said. Then again, it only takes a word. Anyway, the Nigeria did not capitalize. Uh, they're down 11, and still nine minutes remaining. So plenty of time for Nigeria. They just got to start making some shots and continue to lock down defensively. Elodu, another three-point. No, that's a two. The boy, has she got some quality? I tell you, this this zone trap back to the zone is. Uh, Papo was going to come in, hope to stretch the floor, but uh, it's made Belarus think. That's nothing else well you said different this is definitely different nice nice change up oh Vermaica uh, from the corner long two long two but now Goka and uh, with another rebound which has a possibility of a triple double tonight Harding Jeremyinka, Petrovic. Snitsina now. Ladoka with the rebound and Jeremyinka. Fouls Ladoka. Next, next couple of minutes, Jeff. It's an 11-point game. They can score this time, get a stop. They're under 10. It's a really, with the way that they play defense, the way that they can get down the floor. This game is uh, by far from uh, over. And it's not even under control yet for, for Belarus. It seemed to be under control. Yeah. But... Popova had big minutes in the first half. She's in the game. Now offensive foul, Ibiom. Setting the high pick. Well, that's got to be frustrating for Nigeria to get that foul. Oh, yeah. Jeff, it's now about time. Is this, is this song going to have enough time? To really work out, you know, work this better Russian lineup out unless they start making threes. Vermeinka, you can understand that she's getting rebounds in the lane, but to chase them down outside, it's got to upset Nigeria and Troina. Nothing but net, but on the outside, so Nigeria dodged the bullet. Goka inside, and I think she traveled. I'm not, I'm 
not 100% convinced on it. She skipped real quick with two quick steps. I'm not sure, but uh, again, it, we're talking so much about the fact that Belarus has done a great job. Their defense at the moment is just second to none. They're, they really have taken Nigeria away from areas they want to get to. Joyner puts it on the deck, hands it off to Vera Mayinka, turns, puts it up, and knocks it down. He just uh, loses the quality, doesn't he? 11 points. She played at the Eurobasket Women last year, but, but wasn't anywhere close to her best after having a baby. And you can see right now, she's really turning it up a notch. Kalu is the three. Now she's got it to the teammate number 11, Ilonu, and a foul called on Belarus. That's a tough move by her because she had to really work on that second step to get pop over to just get enough contact it's uh, it's great execution of that second step there's the first one goes hard with the second one just turns the corner enough to draw the contact with 18 points. And this is the first. Oh, she missed the, um, she took the technical, couldn't convert that. Makes the second. Back to 12. Still in this game, but you know, they're gonna have to turn around and play tomorrow. And uh, that's perhaps gonna help Korea. Well, I think. Yeah, it's going to give Korea, one, one, they've had a good look at them, two, they're going to have to, this is going to be, go down deep into the fourth before this is decided. Oh, nice give and go with Piermayinka, and she is going to the line. I just love what she brings. She's such a great compliment to what Luchenka does. Great compliment of like the other guys on the floor. It's just when she was only you know, partially fit, Belarus are way short of what they, you know, can be. Lucy's human, she misses that. <laughs> 13 points, 9 rebounds, 4 block shots. A couple of assists as well. Inside now, Nigeria, and they get a good shot from Madu. Just won't go away, will they? They're just hanging in there. They just need a couple of stops. They're going to stay with this, uh, this zone. And Shank is going to check back in. Popova for three. Oh, that one rattled out. The go kick. And now Kalu has it. Pulls up. Sure jump shot. Good. Mid range, rather. Nice play from Nigeria. Not losing their composure. Troina thought about launching one. Oh, no look pass to Vermayenka, and she is fouled, but before the shot. Looks like everything. They're trapped. There's a little pressure. Vermayenka comes to be available for the pass. You know, when you look at Belarus, obviously the, the European teams are accustomed to playing against them, but do they, are they a strange team to play against uh, for a team from Africa or the Americas? You see them doing a lot of different things. I think they, they it's, it's the pace that they play, I think, and, and their, their options that they take a, a control. It's almost controlled speed. It's not beating on the dribble. They pass the ball. That's a European thing. The European team is pass the ball particularly well. The difference they have is they have bigs who are very, very accomplished players. So they can do more than just be big. Well, Vera Mayanka Luchenko can play across the floor. Certainly very Mayanka. And into the Harding, look at the pass from Luchenko. Yeah, there's not many big players. They, they can make passes. They just can't time it, feel it, and, and, and manipulate the pass the way she does. 
And the clock now starting to become uh, the enemy of Nigeria. Four and a half minutes remaining. Into the corner to the captain. And he still can't knock it down. Open Jimmy. It is one of those moments you think, is she the right person to take that three? Another bump, another foul. Well, especially when you've had Ilonu uh, knocking down the threes, but she's not on the court right now. She's catching her breath, and she's going to come back in. And I know sometimes you don't get players enough credit. There's a reason she was left wide open. That's no disrespect for her, but they're saying, well, we're not going to give Ilonu the chance to shoot the three again. Let's see if someone else can make it. If someone else makes it, great. But we've decided that that's who's going to take it. Well, over to me, you can see the body language. She did not want to come out of the game. But you got to make that shot. You want to stay in. Now Harding. Shanka. What about Maddie? Going to reach. Good defense. So Madhu, bounce pass to... Uh, her teammate, Udoka, she puts it up and in, that gets it back to 10. And that's the first one, Jeff, you talked about them needing to create. First time they've been up the floor, first turn. Chance now to get it into 8 or 7. All of a sudden, 8 or 7 sounds a lot better than 10 and 12. Well, this is where Belarus had a problem last year. No doubt about it. And uh, Popova with the bad pass. Stay on the court. Right now, if you're Belarus, you want to get the ball in the hands of Harding. Yeah. It's still a 10-point game with 3.48 remaining. Well, get it into the hands of Harding, but then find Burma and Kalichenko to advance, you know, to get through the air. They'll become available. They're always going to be open. You don't have to panic. Joka. Well, think twice before you go up against Vermayinka. She just rejected it. It's not the best decision they've made so far this evening. That's uh, not recognizing who's defending. Oh, yeah. That's a nice matchup. You said earlier on that Kalu was going to relish this opportunity, and she has absolutely loved the challenge of going against Lindsay Harding, and she's just not bound back down one second. You know, Lindsay Harding knows she's had to play well for the guard for the basketball here. Yeah, I like the approach of Nigeria. It's very positive. But they're in the penalty now. So, you know, that, that, that attempt, maybe the trap's a better option. They might, they might get the steal, they might keep the tempo high. Without sending to the line, but Harding misses the first. Remember, five spots open for They've the... They've given her a two. Why did they... I didn't see what happened. It's just a personal foul. Well, that would have been an 0 for 2. And you'd, you'd expected Nigeria to grab the second rebound. Not sure why she... Why they gave her the, 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 first, one the first one again, yeah. Makes uh, the third one, or the second. So it takes it back up to 11. Got it. They've got to take it over. Something going to the hoop would be great. They could get sank to the hoop, and if they kick it to the perimeter shot, fine. But... No, Goka. And the problem is she's going, to, uh, going up against Lashenka. Well, the, the bad the bad side of that, they've gone to Lashenka, and they've gone to Veramanka. Not where you want to take it. Side to Lashenka. And Lashenka puts it up and in. And back to a 13 point lead. And the clock right now, very definitely, is the enemy of Nigeria. As they are running out of time. The low post players, Lashenka. And Veramayinka getting it done. She received the ball. She made good dribble. And you already was there. Blocks for Belarus. One for Nigeria. Okay, okay. He's having to take the time out a little bit ahead of what he might want to as well. Yeah, you know, he's going to have to go to the whole length. He can't advance it. 
Kim Fowl. I'm Catch. not at the moment well, the way that Farah Baker is the chief of play. I don't know if they're going to make a stop. Mistakes. They're not going to generate enough mistakes. Because Heidi will always be able to find Farah Baker on the check. They're going to try and eat up the clock. You know, the zone trap might work, but this, this Belarusian team looks... It's, it's a step better than it was last year. There's all sorts of reasons for that. Extra depth. And well, you know, you know, I mean, Vermeyenka was there last year, but she just oh, wasn't. Shadow. Yeah. yeah. And that's, been the, that's really been the big difference that I've seen so far tonight. And there's all sorts of little bits. Troina coming back into line. That gives them quality. Not many, but quality minutes. And Papova's able to play the perimeter, which she's, I think she's so much more effective. But you just can't underestimate how good their defense has been. They've kept a good team of 56. Yeah, you're right. Joka hands it off to Ilonu. Ilonu couldn't quite get a handle on it. Kalu for three. And the Schenker with the, the rebound. You know, you want to start 1-0, not 0-1. Get behind the eight ball immediately. Belarus, Vitorovic. Well, perhaps could have uh, taken a little bit more time off the clock, but she had a good look. Goke drives in, good strong move, and earns a trip to the line. See, again, the difference on that one, they went away from penetration against areas where Veramarenko was going to help, where Luchenko was like, like looking after things in the low block. They just attacked space behind Viktorovic, so there was no help available, and she'd have liked to have one, but she's got to the line. Did Belarus take the timeout before the throw. So with 158 remaining, the teams go to the bench. 69-56 Belarus. And, and really, it's going to take something short here for Nigeria now. But they need to manage the deficit. It's one of those things, it's almost uh, his last shot of trying to think he might get back in the game with the next possession after that. After that, I think you're going to say, well, you know, with my, that's it, let's try and make this single digit. Because this group could be one of those groups that goes one on one. This career could, are going to be a good team. This could be an interesting group from that perspective. But uh, Nigeria on the free throw line, they make those, and down to 11, they're going to steal his time. So I, I think he'll, 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 he'll let it go for one or two more. And he's still got one more. He's out of timeouts now, he can't take any. So, in fact, he, that was a Nigerian timeout. So Belarus still have the two timeouts to advance and if they need them. Both teams have no fouls to give, so it's neither, neither, no one's going to want to foul. Everyone on the floor for Belarus shoots the free throw very, very well. The is probably at this stage of her career. Uh, the best option to foul. She, she has the lower percentage compared to the other four. Which okay, rattles it in. Yeah, Louis Chink is not going to touch it until it's down the center of the floor anyway, so. The free throw is good. So, yeah, but just take the time out to advance it. Which is not surprising and very, very smart. That's how you beat pressure. <laughs> you know, one of the questions now you've got to expect in that timeout is who do, who do Nigeria want to catch the basketball? Because unless they run Luchenko away from the basket, right away from the basket, she's going to be an inbound option. Well, oh, still a foul. You don't want Harding to catch it even though she went one for two. You know what, well, Vera Mahinka on the free throw line. I, think, I just think you play defense. And just foul whoever. Well, no, you just play defense. No, no, you don't need to foul, yeah. But, yeah. 
Yeah. It's all day grand. What yeah. is that? Yeah. Who do you want? Who do you want? Where, you where, which, which direction you'd like it to be? Passed down into you the you corner, go maybe trap it there. You it's that type you of stuff. Come on but, uh, okay, or you are, or uh, Sarah. You're just looking at one you're of the most oh, 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 experienced okay. teams in the tournament. Let's go. Yeah, you let's said go. they can make go. mistakes in this situation. I just think they've got all the right, the right people on the floor, all the right Great. experience. Great. This is going to be, someone's going to have to make a break to get a steal. Oh, this gym is filling up, Jeff. This is, uh, they're seeing a great one. They probably thought they were arriving just to wait for the France game, but they're seeing a great game. Oh, great. Oh. Here from Kalu, almost. That's making a play, oh, so close to making the play. So, Abu Kamara back in the game. She's guarding Liktorovic. Vermaenke gets it in, back outside to Popova, and Popova takes an early one and misses. So that helps Nigeria. Wow. Need a quick one though. Joke. Okay. Puts up the jumper, but that's off. And Harding chases it down. Viktorovic thought about it, passes it back out. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Harding goes in and misses the layup. Okay, almost turned it over. And she does. She has it taken away by Lashenka. And you can see the coach saying, you've got to pass the ball. Well, Nigeria had a couple of chances. And now... As you look at Vermaenke, catch it down low, and she misses but gets it back. Harding has to launch it as she looks at the shot clock, and a long rebound goes out to Vermaenke. Vermaenke hit the underside of the ring on that shot. He's blocked. I, I, I still think he hit the ring. I don't know why they didn't reset my spot. Well, that uh, takes it back up to 13. So Nigeria are faced with not only having to beat Korea tomorrow, but hope that Belarus beat Korea for the most part. That's what it's going to boil down to, isn't it? The chance here to get it into single digits. Or to 11 anyway. Because what happens is if you end up with three teams with one and one records, goal, uh, point differential or goal differential, as they call it in Europe, Popova fouls out. And that comes into play. So right now, this Nigeria team is minus 13. And Belarus are plus 13. So now it's minus 12. And Belarus plus 12. So if they could get another basket, that would help their calls without question. Petroina is going to inbound it. Harding has it. Lashenka and Vermeenka holds it. And Belarus, if they're smart, will launch one, right? Oh, yeah. And they don't. They, anyway, I guess at the end of the day, uh, they still get a, a pretty good victory, winning at 71-60 over Nigeria. Oh, those stats, 60, 61%. You know, they took it to the right people. They got really, really good looks. Nigeria's inability to make the three really hurt them in the end. But, uh, three down numbers just favored Belarus. 20 assists always helps. So that was, uh, you know, very many anchor appears in every stat line. Five blocks. It was just... Uh, Everyone, the, the, the key people from Belarus came and, came and did a job. And uh, as good as Nigeria were, they just, they just came up a little short. 
Shevchenko leads, rebounds, scores, and assists. Ravinka, the only time she breaks into it is with the blocks, and Harding had four turnovers, she won't like those. But uh, Luchenka, if, if will alone is enough, she's going to take this team to Rio just on her will. That was just a great game of basketball. It truly was. You've got two pivots, really. I mean, Germink, I guess, is a power forward, but both exceptional talents, and they're playing well. And Harding uh, contributes the way that she does. You know, we saw Sinasina, kind of a cameo tonight, yep. come out and play well at the beginning of the third quarter. And, and uh, that's how it goes. So Belarus, 71 to 60. And Nigeria now have to beat Korea tomorrow to stay alive in the hunt. Thanks for watching, everybody.